Hello! In this video, we'd like to introduce the basic concepts related to the design of experiments used to help us understand the behavior of complex computational models, such as agent-based models. We will look at the relations between inputs and outputs of models, types of experimental design, and methods of analyzing the results of simulation experiments. We will look particularly closely at the statistical emulators or meta-models and methods for uncertainty and sensitivity analysis. So, what is an experiment? What do we learn by experimenting that we would not be able to learn otherwise? Why is an appropriate planning of experiments so important? In our context, we'll interpret experiment as a process of measuring a response of some output variable to changes in a set of inputs. A special case of an experiment is a computer-based one, which is based on mathematical description implemented on a computer by using numerical methods and algorithms. By nature, computer experiments are replicable and can have higher speed and lower cost than, for example, physical, chemical or biological experiments. This makes them well suited to studying large-scale complex social systems. To do that, however, Computer experiments typically have to rely on deterministic or stoch stochastic simulations, which ideally need to be transparent and well documented. Computer experiments for studying social research questions also have different ethical considerations than other types of experiments, especially those which would require human participation. For instance, if we were to analyze optimal ways of evacuating people facing immediate danger, such as fire or flood, the process cannot involve life experiments in real dangerous conditions. Here, computer experiments can help us by simulating the situation and the evacuation process. This is one example where agent-based models coupled with computer experiments can help. How to do it in practice? To make the most of computer experiments, they need to be planned and designed in advance. To ensure that we gain maximum information, we, know to know, we need to know at which parameter values and with which settings the models need to run. This is the domain of a branch of statistics called design of experiments. Its key aims are to help understand the relations between model inputs and outputs and to maximize information or to minimize the error of experimentation. The literature on the design of experiments has its specific terminology. On the next few slides, we would like to introduce some of the key terms. The definitions are mostly based on the online compendium on the Man Managing Uncertainty in Complex Models project. First, a simulation model or a simulator, such as an agent-based model, is a computer program that represents some real system, in our case a social one. The simulator has some inputs and produces an output, which is the variable of interest to the modeler. The input, or in other words, factor, is a variable that can be controlled in the model. The inputs can include model parameters or other aspects of model specification. At the same time, an output, or a response, represents one of the key features of the real system that is being modeled. The relationship between inputs and outputs is that an individual run of a model based on a set of inputs produces, deterministically or stochastically, an output. Second, the model is aligned with re the reality, or rather with observed data, in a process called calibration, which aims to make model outputs as close to the observed val values as possible. It does so by systematically changing the inputs. If an input has the best value that minimizes the difference between the output and the observations, such input is called a calibration parameter. Whatever is left in terms of a difference between the observed reality and the output of a calibrated model is called a model discrepancy or inadequacy. This slide illustrates the concept of calibration parameters and model discrepancy. Let's assume that the real-world process is a sine function shown as a solid dark line and the observations are the black points. We don't know the model, but we suspect that it may be a six-order polynomial. This polynomial represents an agent-based model that we would build to study the reality. We fit this poly polynomial by using ordinary least squares 
and the result is shown with a grey dashed line. In our case, this would involve building and calibrating an agent-based model. The coefficients of this polynomial are calibration parameters, and the large gap that remains between the model and the reality is the model discrepancy. To help with the analysis, we also need to introduce a few more terms. Hence, a metamodel, also known as an emulator or a surrogate, is a statistical or mathematical model of the simulation model. By design or design space, we will understand a selection of input points at which the model will be run. The part of the design space which will be used to calibrate a model or to build a meta model is called a training sample and includes inputs as well as the corresponding outputs. In simulation models, such as agent-based models, the relationships between inputs and outputs are not obvious. There are many sources of uncertainty, some of which are related to the reality and are imperfect knowledge about it, and others to different elements of the simulation process, including the model parameters and the computer code itself. Using the tool of statistical experimental design to analyze the results of agent-based models is based on the observation that the results of agent-based models, no matter how opaque, are indeed computer-based experiments. If we run our model at different parameter values and with different settings, so if we experiment by executing the model on a computer many times, we learn about the behavior of the model. This is especially important given the sometimes very complex, non-transparent and analytically intractable nature of many computer simulations. At the same time, we need to be transparent about the uncertainty of complex models. This is the domain of uncertainty quantification, or UQ. UQ is a research area which involves learning about model uncertainty, sensitivity of the output to different inputs, and finding out about model parameters by calibrating the model to available data. Bayesian methods offer natural tools for UQ applications. In the second part of this video, my colleague Dr. Jason Hilton will say more about the different methods that are used for designing and analyzing experiments involving complex computational agent-based simulation models and, of course, their uncertainty. Hello. As you've just heard, uncertainty quantification methods are powerful tools that enable us to better understand both simulation models and the real-world processes that they are meant to represent. Properly accounting for uncertainty is vital, as without doing so, we're running the risk of, of drawing incorrect conclusions about our model. In the rest of this lecture, I will describe the basic principles of design and emulation before moving on to uncertainty quantification and calibration techniques. One key insight of this approach is to think about a computer simulation as a function represented by f of x in the slide here. Uh, that tr transforms input values to output values. We can approximate this function using a statistical model. This emulator provides a stand-in for the simulation that is both simple and transparent, uh, and which can estimate outputs of the simulation almost instantaneously for any combination of input points. In attempting to construct such a model, we need to be able to answer two questions. Firstly, we need to know at what design points uh, we should run our simulation in order to create the training sample for our meta model. And secondly, we need to know what type of meta model we should be using in order to emulate the behaviour of our simulation. These questions have important practical implications. If your simulation takes a long time to run, uh, then poorly chosen experimental designs may mean that completing a full set of experimental runs is too time-consuming to even be considered. Within appropriate meta-models, on the other hand, uh, a poor approximation to your simulation might be obtained, uh, which will lead you to faulty conclusions. In fact, the answers to these questions are strongly intertwined. Both the choice of design and the choice of meta-model rely on the types of assumptions we are willing to make about how the simulation in question transforms, transforms inputs into outputs. For simple simulations, where the relationship between simulation inputs and outputs is expected to be linear, 
or perhaps to involve simple two-way interactions or quadratic effects, uh, a least squared regression model with low order polynomial terms will probably be enough. These polynomial regression models can be fitted with factorial designs, which involve defining two or three levels for in each input dimension and running the simulation at every combination of these levels. However, agent-based models involve the multiple interactions of many random decision makers, the agents in our simulation, and as such, the simulations themselves may exhibit complex behaviour. By this I mean that we might see highly non-linear relationships between inputs and outputs. And as a result, more flexible meta-models may be required, uh, and these need to be combined with experimental designs which allow for these more complicated input-output relations uh, to be detected. Uh, Gaussian process meta-models um, are one class of uh, model that can capture these kind of relationships. These are non-parametric Bayesian statistical models that make much less restrictive assumptions about the simulation. More specifically, they assume that simulation outputs are smooth functions of simulation inputs, and the input points that are closer together will lead to similar outputs. These assumptions are codified in prior distributions, um, and samples from such a prior distribution is dis are displayed on the figure in the slide. So this describes the sort of input-output relationships we believe might be possible before we've actually run our simulation. Then, once the meta-model has been updated with the training data, we can obtain a posterior distribution that describes our predictions for the simulation output for any combination of input values uh, based on what we've learned about the simulation from the training data. Um, we also obtain a measure of how uncertain we are uh, about the value of the simulation at input values that we have yet to observe. Um, now, such a posterior distribution is displayed uh, in the figure in the slide, uh, where you can see how the, the distribution has been updated to account for the outputs observed at four training points, uh, represented by the red dots in the figure. Now, factorial designs may not provide sufficient resolution to allow complex relationships between inputs and outputs to be discovered. Furthermore, the number of simulation runs uh, needed for factorial designs becomes very large when many inputs are used. Um, in contrast, a Latin hypercube design uh, divides each input axis into a number of sections and then places points to ensure that there's at least one design point in every section. Latin hypercubes provide good designs for experiments with agent-based models because they can be made to be space-filling so that all areas of the parameter space are explored. Um, and furthermore, uh, as a consequence of their design, they don't require so many points when there are many input dimensions to be investigated. The combination of Latin hypercubes and Gaussian process emulators are good default choices for the analysis of agent-based models. They provide for quick approximations of the simulation output for any input value combination. They also allow for an appropriate description of the uncertainty associated with these approximations and those resulting from other sources. Uncertainty quantification describes a set of tools aimed at providing a rigorous accounting for what we don't know about the simulation and its relationship with the reality it is supposed to represent. Bayesian statistics, which represents probability as representing degrees of belief, is a natural framework within which to conduct such quantification exercises. Now, uncertainty relating to computational experiments comes from a number of sources. The first group of these relate to the simulation itself and how much we know about its behaviour. Uh, the, 
These include the extent to which the pseudo-randomness in the code translate to randomness in the output. Uh, and also the, our own lack of knowledge about the strength of which outputs respond to inputs. Another set of sources of uncertainty uh, about our system uh, correspond to our uncertainty about how the simulation relates to reality. So, for example, we might not know the true value of our simulation inputs, that is, the value which holds in reality. Secondly, the simulation model we are analysing may be an imperfect representation of the real world uh, and may be wrong in some key respect in how it represents the real world process. And this is the model discrepancy that Jacob was describing earlier. Finally, our observations of the real world may rely on imperfect measurement tools, such as surveys subject to sampling errors, or measurement instruments subject to biases. Gaussian process metamodels can be analysed in order to quantify some of these sources of uncertainty. Uncertainty analysis is one technique for understanding how our uncertainty about true input values results in uncertainty about our predicted system outputs. The extent of our uncertainty about inputs may be estimated using the variability in our observations of these values, or possibly also constructed based on our reasonable prior information. Um, sensitivity analysis goes one step further than this and it describes how sensitive a simulation output is to changes in different inputs. Now, in general, this could be done locally, that is, for specific values of the simulation inputs, or globally, in which case we're interested in the average or total sensitivity across all simulation or across all input values. Now, global sensitivity analysis partitions the total output variance, describing how much variation is due to changes in each of the inputs uh, in a similar way to more traditional ANOVA techniques. Metamodels can also aid with the problem of calibrating a simulation, That's, that is, uh, of finding values of unknown simulation inputs that result in simulation outputs that are close to what is observed in reality. One way of doing this is by optimising by defining some measure of the distance between simulated outputs and our observations, and then minimising this measure by adjusting our inputs. The single input point that results from this process is our optimal input value. However, given the list of uncertainties we discussed earlier, we are unlikely to know enough about our system to be confident that such an optimal value is the true one. Uh, relying on such a, an optimal value may lead us to draw incorrect conclusions about our simulations. Probabilistic ca uh, calibration methods instead aim to account for all sources of uncertainty and identify a set of input values that could have generated the values we observe, protecting us against our overconfidence. Gaussian process emulators are not the only choice of metamodel, however they do provide helpful tools for the analysis of agent-based simulations. They also help us understand the various sources of uncertainty about both a simulation and about how it relates to reality. We must be careful, however, not to think that metamodelling will just solve all our problems for us. A calibrated simulation is not a guarantee of a correct simulation because there may be infinitely many simulation specifications that can approximate real-world observed values. Only some such simulations provide reasonable approximations of the real data generating processes. Uh, as a result, a robust process of validation, verification and grounding in data and theory must be in place in order for us to have confidence in the conclusions we're drawing from agent-based simulations. Many thanks for listening.